What is going on YouTube? One on the X from here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. We're outside here at Arizona Kawasaki KTM Triumph Tucson. Try saying that 10 times fast, but we're out here because we have an awesome bike to try out. If you're new to the channel, hit that like button and then check out the rest of the stuff I have. And maybe if you like it, hit subscribe because you might enjoy some of the stuff that I put out. But we're reviewing a bike that uh, I've actually gotten a few requests on. This beautiful Triumph Speed Triple RS 1200 or 1200 RS, whatever you want to call it. All right, so there's a lot of stuff we want to go over with this beautiful 2022 Triumph Speed Triple 1200 RS. <laughs> so many words, so many names, but the key points, it's 1160 CC, 177 horsepower, and around uh, 92 pound feet of torque. You know, nothing crazy, but that's actually a significant number. The torque on this thing is felt really everywhere in the rev range. I know that around 2000 RPM, it kicked up after that point, but even still just getting it moving, it was phenomenal. The way this engine picks up this triple, it sounds good even with this ridiculous exhaust on it with this crazy valve, you have to get past a certain RPM for it to open. The riding position of this RS, it, Speed Triple RS, is super comfortable. It's very, very similar to the Street Fighter. I'd say it's a little bit more aggressive forward, but not by a lot. I think the seat height's relatively similar. I think we're at 32.7 inches tall. If we look at the Speed Triple RS 1200, do you like the looks of it? I, at first, didn't. You know, when you see pictures of it, it's kind of weird bug eye right here. And you're like, yeah, it looks like a bumblebee. It's kind of stupid, but the it's grown on me. I actually really like the way the Speed Triple looks. It's got this weird front end, but you know what? It's unique and distinctly a Triumph and it's distinctly a Speed Triple. And that's really what you look for in motorcycles is what makes it stand out from the rest. You might say, well, it's ugly as shit. So that's what makes it stand out. But I don't know. The only ugly bike that I've seen is the ZH2 and that's that front end is a disaster. So this is definitely an improvement that and I've kind of grown to like the way these look because the Street Fighters got almost again a love hate. I said it looked like Mr. Burns face like the profile of it. So you know, I, uh, I kind of like the weird of it. It's got lovely little carbon fiber accents, at least on the mud guard. The plastics are still there, but that's no big deal. And then it's got awful silver that's on the again on the Street Fighter. You find it here. So apparently some people like this brush aluminum look, but as a package, I kind of dig the aesthetics of it. When I talk about any bike, I always talk about the brakes and this thing has an incredible Brembo system in it. It's very, very strong. It's not bitey to the sense of where it's too touchy and it makes you go crazy when you just lightly grab the, the lever there. I like it. It's got an amazing feel. And again, this is such a silly short ride. So yeah, take it with a grain of salt if you want, but just the speed that I got up to and then being able to slow down and progressively break, I had tons of confidence in it. I know if you get on some twisty roads, it's going to be a blast. So real quick, we're talking about the ride of the Triumph Speed Triple 1200 RS. It's got the nice old lean suspension, which means it's relatively firm, but at the same time, it was pretty supple. We went over again, a lot of little bumps and, and dips in the road as we were went through these, some of these back alleys and it soaked it up really nicely. I didn't really bounce around too bad. And then when I did accelerate hard, it felt planted and, and very nimble and light, but at the same time, it soaked up the bumps well enough. It didn't, it wasn't jarring or anything. This seat, is very comfortable. It's very soft. It's not too wide. Some of the bikes like my Aprilia, the seat's way too wide, especially as you get back on it. This right in through here is really comfortable. You can really get up into the tank, but also not have it so narrow that it feels like a bicycle seat. Cause there's some bikes I've ridden where it's super hard up through here. As a dude, that's not the best feeling, especially around these ridges. It's very soft and the seat's got a nice tactile feel to it. So, when you do slide around or want to move around, you don't actually slide. And I like that. I also like that the rear cowling is in seat that they left it, even though they got the pegs, you can put a seat there. I like that they kept the plastic cowling over it. It looks a lot better. But overall, the riding experience, it's very fast. It's got tons of power down low, which means it's gonna be usable out on the streets, daily riding. The mirrors don't vibrate. Obviously they're on the handlebars, they're very nice. Seating position is comfortable, but not super aggressive. 
and the brakes are strong but not insanely strong so it's a very well packaged machine and i had a very fun time riding it the short amount of time that i did and then finding all the little quirks about it was pretty fun as well this dash is phenomenal all right so i want to get in the menu i want to turn this bad boy on push this little guy here wait for that to turn yellow like it just did and then you get this incredible screen come up and i do mean incredible how cool is that look? Love the way the stash looks. Okay, let's go through the stash real quick. We're gonna do this handheld because I had it on the stand. I didn't like the way it looked. All right, so button layout. Mode. This toggles through your bike, uh, like support menus, if you will. So we'll go through the modes real quick. Love how it looks. So in order to go through the actual menus, you have to push this down like as if you're about to start it. And then you can go through each one of these. You have road, sport, track, rider. And that's the one you can adjust to make your own different settings for your track control, ABS, mapping. And then you have rain, which obviously makes sense for riding in the rain. But in order to get to that, again, there's this little button down here, but here's the main menu. Change the brightness, theme, language. The theme's kind of cool. You change from this to cobalt. And the cobalt's okay. It just turns blue. It doesn't do that cool little furnace uh, transition there, which I, don't know, I feel like that's a selling point to me. That's just really cool. But we go down to the next menu, and that's the bike. It's where you change your rider age, check your coolant, warning, service, all that good stuff. You go to settings, and that's where you get into your rider modes. And again, you see track control, shift assist, which is auto blooper up and down. And you have your indicators. I thought they were only in man, like manual, like yeah, turn them off, but apparently you can change them to self cancel, which is kind of cool. So we'll go back to that. So the next rider, whoever tests this or buys this can do that. Go to rider modes, rain. And this is what rain is set up as. You can obviously change this, which I think is pretty cool. You can actually go into each one of these menus and sort of tailor them to how you want. I think the default settings are solid. Riders where you can change again on road track. Me, I probably keep all of these on sport, which I kind of find interesting that you have a track mode, but you can only set your engine to sport. I would think that you'd want to have a track setting for your engine mapping as well. But you know, I rode in sport and I think the throttle response is pretty fast. The button interaction is really nice the detents are nice they feel good they feel solid and that's not something you can actually say about a lot of these bikes these switches like the perlia were super loose and i didn't like it obviously this thing's got cruise control pretty sweet but the fact that uh these have a solid detent you know i'm a huge fan of so i think one of the most incredible sections of this is journey obviously trip every bike's got that Lap timer, cool. A lot of bikes that go on track do that, but fuel status. Look at that, miles per gallon, continuous, non-continuous, and then you have the range, which I think is amazing. I think that is something that every bike should definitely have. Not only that, but this also has a freaking fuel gauge. Look at that, amazing. There's something I found really cool about this dash as well. The RS Speed Triple 1200, I'm gonna say it different ways, but anyways, is the Bluetooth connectivity. Obviously, you have your navigation and it'll give you turn by turn ins instructions. And then you have your music, phone, text messages. But to me, right here, the GoPro, that's awesome. You can pair your GoPro to this and control it through your bike, which I think is a really good touch. It's starting, people are starting, and manufacturers are starting to notice that people use their GoPros a lot when they ride. Another styling aspect that I want to point out here is the single sided swing arm. I think that once you remove this gargantuan exhaust, this stupid valve, that's gonna make and clean up the back end of this so well, especially if you take these off and then you replace this whale tail that comes out the back end. If you replace those few things, this bike is going to look so, so freaking clean. This is your ignition. And that's only with the key fob with it on can you actually get it to go it's really just a signal it's all that that ignition really is because you can see there's no place for a key why is that because of this a key fob for the triumph 
And in order for this to work, you have to hold it. You can see how that's red, and then it turns. See how that's red? Then it turns green. Then it's ready to go. And then that's where you hit this guy. That's gonna turn yellow like it did. And then that's how everything starts up. But yeah, kind of a uh, interesting starting sequence. Let's listen to it for a second. How does this sound? It's brand new, so we don't wanna do any crazy revs. I would choose the RS over the RR because one, I don't like the front cowling of the RR. I know they try to go retro. I just don't like the way that it looks. And it's 20,000, whereas opposed to this is 18.5. And I'm not sure that the electronic suspension really give you that much more usability or make it that much better. So to me, I think this is a great price and a great package for the price. So I want to thank Arizona Kawasaki KTM Triumph of Tucson again for getting this bike ready for me and then just allowing me to take a brand new machine out on the road and, and get to test it and share with you guys. Can't thank them enough. It's awesome that dealerships let me do this. It's a lot of fun. But with that, I hope you all have a good one. I'm out.